Live from Santa Clara, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering Juniper Nextwork 2016, brought to you by Juniper. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley for Next Work Network 20, 2016 with Juniper Network's annual user conference. I'm John Forrest, Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Eric Flegel, Vice President of Network Engineering of WOW, exclamation point, which stands for Wild. <laughs> it was Wide Open West. Wide yes. Open West, it's a cable <laughs> it's provider, a, yeah. overbuilder, a um, lot of gear, a lot on Juniper. You're running a lot of traffic. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So tell about the cable. I mean, you, you have, tell about the business. How, what is WOW um, you guys doing? Just give a quick overview of the business that you're sure. in, cable obviously, and then footprint, gear, speeds, feeds, data yeah. flow. Yeah, sure. Uh, so WOW is a uh, cable operator, um, mostly in the kind of Midwest and Southeast markets. I think we're in you know, 12, 13 states um, with 19 markets throughout those states. Uh, for the most part, kind of your tr traditional cable operator, triple play, bundle, uh, voice, video, and data services, uh, in addition to uh, a significant focus on commercial commercial services and growing that commercial space. And so why are you here at this event, just at Juniper's event? Um, we, uh, as far as WOW goes, we're, we're a, a, a pretty big customer from, from our network standpoint, use a lot of core and access, uh, and then specifically, Right now for us, NFV is a big, big focus area for us and virtualization of the network in general, kind of what that means and where we can can kind of push that and, and leverage that too uh, in many ways. For we our had network. Rami on earlier, the CEO of Juniper, Stu asked him about the NFV question. He essentially said, I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> we're betting the ranch on NFV. He didn't say that, but <laughs> that's my interpretation. But he's bullish on it. He's, he thinks in the next 18 months, NFV's going to hit his stride. Your thoughts on that, yeah. how you guys see that working? Uh, I th I, I would agree. I think it's finally starting to get some legs, and and uh, competitors of ours, including us, you know, we're we're finally starting to get some things in play. Being able to provide real services to customers across the platform, um, and I, th it's just, it's. I, I think the most exciting thing about it is is there's a lot of the possibilities, right? And we have a lot we can do with it, and some of which I don't even think we know yet. Eric, we've t we talked to some of the telcos, uh, some sure. of your competitors out there, yeah. and you know those first NFE solutions, you know, you're walking over a lot of glass to make them happen. Um, it's kind of a challenging out there, but starting to bear fruit. Is, is that kind of your experience, and what, what do you see? Uh, it's de definitely the case. I mean, we kind of went into it, um, we kind of, you know, being, uh, I would say not the not, not the largest operators in the world. You know, we had to pick some areas of focus for us. So we picked some specific services that we're going after, that we're building towards, uh, to focus on uh, around managed services and things like that. That we're looking to um, grow. Uh, grow our services and grow our platform. Um, and initially, it wasn't easy. It's taken a lot of work by you know, a dedicated, passionate team on our side uh, that have worked really hard to to get there. It has not been easy, to be honest. Um, and we have had to go through quite a few. Um, there have been quite a few speed bumps along the way, but we're getting there. So you, you guys worked with the cloud CPE um, with Juniper. Can you share uh, any? In yeah, color so, on that product and yeah, the so virtual cloud thing? Yeah, so specifically for us, we're utilizing CSO, Contrail Service Orchestration, uh, and Contrail uh, to deliver NFE services. Um, uh, we're also interested in their NFE, NFX platform for uh, similar type of services, but on customer-prem. Very honestly for us, uh, right now the focus is to reduce the equipment on the customer-prem, just from an operational perspective, less truck rolls, less yeah. equipment to fail, all those sorts of things. So we're trying to do it kind of in our in our head ends, in our hub sites, in our data centers to provide those services. That's the truck roll, that's an economic impact to your absolutely. business. Absolutely, absolutely. profitability. How's that work technically? Are you going to replace it on CPE or on-prem device and put it in the network, or how does that work? Uh, or are you we will always have else? something, well, I don't want to say always, there, there, we will have some sort of DMARC device. Um, the idea is to break, make that cost as low as possible. So really strip the intelligence out of that, put the intelligence in the cloud, kind of, you know, uh, so to speak, and then keep that device as, you know, really a, a DMARC from a test and, and validation standpoint. So the philosophical question that everyone's asking themselves, we go to a lot of these events and it's, and it, it, it's a great 
question because everyone has a different answer, so I'll ask you the same question. How are you looking at the network differently? Because you have existing network, obviously Core and Juniper all everywhere, but as you look at the future, knowing what the, some of the economic issues are, you mentioned you know, on-prem devices, truck rolls, sure. that's kind of pretty obvious, but what are the things that you guys see that, that makes the network look differently to you guys as you shape it uh, forward in the future? I, I think it's just a continued continued evolution of convergence. I mean, we've seen it in, in optical and, and network layers, and, and that's continuing to, to, to move, and now we're seeing it in kind of compute and network and cloud, and in such a way that, um, you know, I, I foresee us getting to the point where the network is, is just a bunch of compute. So a place where we have purpose-built hardware, purpose-built um, proprietary uh, hardware in many cases to, to deliver the services as a cable operator that we have to provide, uh, it's just going to become um, almost commodity commute, com compute with you know, the intelligence and the software running on top of it. Um, and then from a transition standpoint, it's, 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 a, it's been a big, it's a big transition from a people standpoint, right? And that's a, a area of focus for us on trying to also um, shift the expertise and the talent of our, of our workforce. I'm just curious, what are some of the things you've seen within the, in the customer base that have been new trends lately. Obviously you see you have all the triple play stuff. Is there, is there uh, more internet, more cord cutting? You're seeing behaviors. What, do you, what trends do you see if you connect uh, the dots? Yeah, I mean obviously cord cutting is what everyone's talking about. Um, for us uh, as a, a cable operator, um, moving away from traditional linear video, uh, that's something that we, uh, we we understand as a cable operator, know it's going to happen. In fact, we embrace it, and are working on uh, new products and services that help uh, help a customer take advantage of a lot of the over-the-top streaming uh, services that are out there, and in a unified search approach and things like that to actually make that when easier. When you say linear TV, what do you mean by that? Just broadcast like television, scheduled eight yep, o'clock. The show's on. Absolutely, li thing. live television, right? Yeah. Um, as Asynchronous, non-linear consumption. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the cube, what okay. we do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll get the cube over the top. <laughs> uh, totally secure here at Juniper Networks. Um, what's the coolest thing that you're working on right now? Uh, I mean, I, I, I honestly think this is it. I, from a, a NFV standpoint, I mean, I'm really excited about it. I get, uh, uh, my colleagues will tell you, tell you I get worked up about it, I get pretty passionate about it, excited about the future and what it means for us and the industry as a whole. I think, I think it's one of the biggest changes from a network perspective that we have seen in quite a while. So. What are people missing about NFV? I see, first of all, I run into two types of people. Eh, NFV's going to be awesome. Eh, NFV, that dog doesn't hunt. There's really two camps out there right now, and I'm oversimplifying, but generally speaking. So, eh, and maybe the, the dogma of whatever religion they're from, and politically and technically, you know, in, in the network view. But what are they missing with NFV? I'm hearing more, more people say NFV is happening, it's going to be big. What are the folks missing out there that, we're, that they may not seeing? Is it it's technology? A, it's a, it's is tough. it just application? Is it learning? Is it training? I, I, I think there's. Well, I think the key to it is really is really people. I mean, to be honest, it's a shift in uh, it's a shift in thinking of the traditional network engineer, the traditional um, folks that you'll have, you know, designing and building networks, and it's shifting to very software centric. Uh, developer model kind of uh, services uh, in a way that a lot of the big you know web, web content guys are already uh, driving. Um, they think about this new kind of content type, right? So they're, yeah. they're kind of thinking of the new outside the box or Absolutely. outside the network yeah. <laughs> kind of thinking. It is, and and then you know obviously the hardware component is coming down in price. You know it's a it's a significant factor. Eric, security's been really the, the top issue discussed here at the show. How, how, what do you think about what you've heard here from Juniper and how's that fitting into the solutions you guys are building? Uh, I, no, I, th I think it's uh, great specifically, um, you know, as I said, we're deploying, uh, going to be deploying the VSRX for our uh, secu managed security offering. Uh, in addition to, we're, we're excited about the uh, CSRX, the containerized uh, version of that. We're uh, looking forward to uh, kind of um, getting working on that. Um, but it's it's a service that customer obviously as as we talked about earlier uh, in uh, at the show here it's a, it, there, there's no lack of need for security for customers and especially businesses and, and yeah Eric would love to hear how kind of that virtualization containers dis discussions you know playing out in your, in, <laughs> in, in your environment um, I, you know uh, our, our our technical teams could probably would love to have the the conversation 
uh, uh, in some cases, a, a bit of a religious debate, probably. Yeah. Um, but we're we're proponents of containerization and, and look to kind of continue continue that. Okay, final question, uh, Juniper, going in the right direction. Your opinion? Uh, I, th I definitely think so. Software is a focus. Um, and I think you see it across a lot of the, the vendors now, and what, one reason I've been kind of a proponent of Juniper um, is because, it, you know, at least in my opinion, they've been on that path for a while and are one of the, uh, uh, kind of have been leading the way in many cases. Um, software is, is where, the, uh, where the future is, I think, uh, and, and they're doing a great job of it. Well, the, the founder has been talking about software going back to, I remember 2008. Absolutely. I mean, they really, I mean, they might have, kind of tacked a few times, but now they seem to be in a nice track relative yeah. to the value of NFV and software based, but they've had this software mindset for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, and like you said, I think they have had a couple, uh, there's been some points in their history where they've maybe they've gotten off track a little bit, um, but I, I would say I think they're hitting their stride a little bit and, and doing well. All right, Eric Legal, Vice President of Network Engineering from WOW, big cable provider, operator. Thanks for sharing your insights. Uh, NFV, it's, uh, <laughs> it's here, it's happening. Going down in price and again, over the top, new content, and linear cable is struggling, <laughs> dead as we would say, but uh, <laughs> over the top is where the action is. Thanks for sharing right. your, your thoughts here. Absolutely. We'll so be right back with more in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, after this short break. I remember when I had such a fantastic